Over 100,000 sheets of paper are recycled around the world every minute. Stack them together, and you'd build a paper tower taller than the Empire State Building every 60 seconds. That's 144,000 towers a day, stretching high enough to circle the Earth multiple times over. But how do yesterday's junk mail, office documents, and old newspapers become the crisp, clean pages you use today? From curbside bins to pulping machines, this is how over 100,000 sheets of paper are recycled each minute in a factory. A global ballet of machinery, chemistry, and human ingenuity turning waste into wonder. Paper is one of the most common materials on Earth, and one of the most recyclable. We use it in packaging, publishing, advertising, and communication. In fact, the average American uses the equivalent of 700 pounds of paper per year. Globally, we produce over 400 million metric tons of paper and cardboard annually, enough to fill over 5,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. And while digital media grows, paper is still everywhere, in classrooms, offices, grocery stores, and deliveries. Fortunately, over 65% of that paper is recycled. In some countries like Germany and South Korea, that rate exceeds 85%. The global paper recycling industry is worth over $35 billion and supports hundreds of thousands of jobs. But what does it take to give used paper a second life? Let's head inside the factories where old paper becomes new again, a process that combines century-old engineering with modern efficiency, blending brute force with microscopic precision. The journey begins in your home, school, or office. Used paper is tossed into recycling bins, then picked up by waste management trucks. From there, it's transported to a material recovery facility, or MRF. At these facilities, Paper is separated from glass, plastics, and metals. Workers and machines sort through mountains of waste, often handling hundreds of tons per day. Optical scanners, conveyor belts, and manual labor all play a role. Some facilities even use artificial intelligence to identify paper by thickness, print density, and fiber quality. Once sorted, bales of paper are compressed into massive cubes, weighing up to 2,000 pounds each the equivalent of 400,000 sheets of paper per bale. These are then shipped to paper recycling mills, where the real transformation begins. Trucks, trains, and cargo ships move paper across the globe, from city recycling centers to remote industrial paper mills. Each truckload delivers a new opportunity to save resources and cut down landfill waste. For every ton recycled, three cubic yards of landfill space are saved. Not all paper is created equal. Cardboard, office paper, newspaper, magazines, each type has different fibers, coatings, and contaminants. At the mill, bales are broken apart and sorted by type and quality. High-grade paper like printer paper is separated from lower grades like newspaper or food packaging. Security-sensitive paper may go through extra precautions to ensure it is fully destroyed. Why? because higher quality fibers produce stronger recycled paper. The purer the batch, the better the final product. Some mills use advanced spectrometry tools to assess the chemical composition of each paper type. Others use robotic arms to speed up the sorting process. Sorting accuracy directly impacts the efficiency of the rest of the recycling process. Once sorted, the paper is shredded into small bits. This increases the surface area making it easier to break down in the next step. Pulping. The shredding machines can process over 10 tons of paper per hour. Blades are routinely sharpened or replaced to maintain precision. The sound is deafening, an industrial roar of tearing, slicing, and grinding. The shredded paper is mixed with hot water and chemicals inside a massive machine called a pulper. Imagine a giant blender the size of a small swimming pool. It churns the paper into a slurry, a soupy mix of fibers, ink, and contaminants. This slurry is about 99% water. Industrial pulpers are lined with heavy-duty blades and paddles that rotate at high speeds, agitating the mix and breaking down fibers. Each batch is timed and monitored for consistency. From here, it passes through a series of screens that remove larger debris, staples, tape, 
plastic bits, and even the occasional pen cap. These screens vary in mesh size and can be customized for different paper grades. Some screens spin, others vibrate, all ensuring only pure fiber moves forward. The pulping process can take anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes, depending on the quality of the input material. During this stage, temperature, pH levels, and viscosity are all carefully monitored by technicians. But the real challenge? Ink. It binds to the fiber, and removing it cleanly is essential. Now comes the rebuilding process. Sometimes, virgin, unrecycled wood fibers are added to the pulp to strengthen it. This hybrid blend ensures the new paper will be durable and high quality. The ratio depends on end use. Higher for fine writing paper, lower for newsprint. Color dyes, sizing agents to control ink absorption, and fillers like clay or calcium carbonate are mixed in to achieve the desired texture and finish. The result? A consistent creamy pulp ready to become paper again. Additives are precisely measured and blended by computerized systems that ensure quality control. Technicians monitor flow rates, ingredient temperatures, and consistency in real time. This is also where custom orders come to life. From glossy magazine pages to absorbent tissue paper, clients can specify everything from brightness level to grain direction. The pulp is poured onto a fast-moving mesh screen called a Fordrinier table. Water drains through the mesh, leaving behind a mat of intertwined fibers. This wet sheet travels through a series of press rollers that squeeze out more moisture. Felt belts absorb the water, and the sheet gets denser with each roll. Some presses use vacuum suction to extract even more moisture. Others include heating elements to accelerate drying. By the end, it's gone from a 99% water slurry to a damp sheet of paper, still fragile, but taking shape. The paper begins to resemble its final form. This part of the process requires extreme precision to avoid inconsistencies in thickness or fiber distribution. Even a single wrinkle can mean a roll is rejected. Sensors constantly measure moisture, thickness, and web alignment. The goal is absolute consistency. Next, the sheet enters the drying section, a maze of steam-heated metal cylinders, each reaching up to 100 degrees Celsius, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Here, the paper loses its remaining moisture, hardening into a continuous ribbon over 30 feet wide and moving at over 60 miles per hour. This part of the machine can stretch over 100 meters in length. The dried sheet is then calendared a process where it's passed between smooth rollers to create a uniform thickness and finish. Mate, glossy, textured, each finish is tailored to the paper's final use. Some lines apply special coatings for printability, water resistance, or food safety compliance. These coatings are often invisible but play a crucial role. From there, it's wound into giant rolls weighing several tons, ready to be cut into sheets or transformed into packaging books, newspapers, and more. These rolls can be wider than a school bus and heavier than an SUV. Every roll is inspected for defects like wrinkles, spots, or uneven texture. Samples are tested for brightness, strength, and absorbency. This process is exhaustive. Some mills reject up to 5% of output to maintain high standards. Some facilities use AI-driven cameras to detect flaws in real time. Others have labs where technicians test samples with standardized procedures. Each batch is logged and tracked for accountability. Only the highest quality batches are approved for consumer use. The finished paper is then shipped to printers, manufacturers, and packaging facilities, ready to begin its next life. Some will become cereal boxes, others will become medical forms, and many will return, yet again, to the recycling loop. A circular journey that saves energy and resources. So, how do over 100,000 sheets of paper get recycled every minute? With pulpers the size of pools, air jets that scrub ink like a bubble bath, and drying systems that stretch longer than a football field, it's a process that saves trees, energy, and water. In fact, recycling one ton of paper saves 17 trees, 7,000 gallons of water, and enough electricity to power an average home for six months. And it doesn't just help the planet, it helps the economy.
the paper recycling industry supports over 150,000 jobs in the U.S. alone, with new innovations making the process faster, cleaner, and more efficient every year. Countries with robust recycling systems also reduce landfill dependence, cutting methane emissions and saving municipalities millions in waste management costs. Global paper demand is expected to rise another 50% by 2050, especially in packaging. Recycling is the only way to meet that demand sustainably. So next time you recycle a sheet of paper, remember, you're not just reducing waste, you're fueling an industrial marvel that operates every minute of every day. If you enjoyed this deep dive into factory recycling, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment suggesting the next material you want us to explore. Because sometimes the stuff we throw away is just the beginning.